Welcome to my thoughts on X-Men, the animated series, season two, episodes three and four. These episodes are called Whatever It Takes and Red Dawn. And yeah, let us dive right in. So right, real quick, before we do, please support sag After. There's a link in the description box to donate and some links to videos that explain why the strike is so important. And... Yeah, uh, yeah. Spoilers for everything, all, all of the episodes leading up to and including these two, and starting with episode, yeah, season two, episode three, whatever it takes. So we meet Mijnari, who is a speedster, and he becomes possessed by the Shadow King. Really love the design of the Shadow King. I'm not sure I've read the, the comic stories about the, the Shadow King, but really cool design. I, I can imagine they took the they got the design from the comics since that's what they do with a lot of the designs on the show. And yeah, this is Storm's Village and they say it's Urson, although it's not quite like biological. Let's see. But there's different kinds of family. And Morph is very cruel to Wolverine. And let's see, then we... Um, yeah, uh, I think there's some racism or at least racialism in the depiction of Kenya here. Very cool that Morph, just for like a second or so, transforms into Deadpool. I forget if they expand on that. I mean, they Wolverine and Deadpool do have history in the comics. And let's see. And, you know, ultimately Wolverine does accept that Morph needs time. And... Yeah, really cool seeing the astral plane, and they just barely get uh, Mijinari out, and Shadow King is stuck in there. And yeah, and we see that Xavier and Magneto did survive, they're now in the Savage Land. Really, really cool. Love the Savage Land. And, yeah, their mutant powers have been disabled, and now Xavier can walk. Let's see. You're going to make it right up until we reach the waterfall, and then no longer. And that brings us to episode two, or episode four, rather, Red Dawn. And, yeah, so they do survive the waterfall, and there's a T-Rex... Have I mentioned already how much I love the Savage Land? Because it's a lot. I would gain little satisfaction from your death. Not none, but little. And, yeah, Magneto, you know, get, uses the geyser to take out the T-Rex. And, yeah, so Russians who want the Soviet Union recreated attack and Omega Red is unleashed and you know it's it is sadly true there are you know some powerful people in Russia right now who want to recreate the Soviet Union including Putin you know thankfully it's extremely unlikely to happen anytime soon but they are going to be able to cause a lot of misery in the you know in the process and Friends of Humanity and Jubilee, Jubilee fight. I'm not entirely sure how her fireworks powers are removing graffiti, but I kind of love it. And I do quite like her line, with friends like these, who needs enemies? And yeah, Colossus helps out. And yeah, Jubilee goes with Colossus. Which, yeah, you can you can understand the you know, and it's yeah, be careful about leaving a teenager by themselves. They they are 
liable to, to the, at least she left a note. That was, that was the absolute bare minimum. And, yeah, relieved that they let Ileana survive. I mean, I'm not really expecting them to actually deliver new mutants down the line on this show. But don't kill a kid just like that. Just, yeah. But apparently the rest of the family are dead, so that's dark. And... Let's see... Yeah, very cool when Omega Red fights Wolverine... And Colossus tosses a tank onto Omega Red. Let's see. And and I appreciate we get this very brief, like it's less than a second we see Captain America. And it is, you know, if I recall in the comics, Omega Red was created as the Russian answer to uh, Captain America. So, you know, again, it's like... I suppose I suppose most people could probably recognize. I was about to say it's for the for the people who read the comics, but people could probably recognize Captain America on site back then. He's he's enough of a you know, a lot of mainstream people might not know much about him, but his look is iconic. And yeah, and and Dark Star eventually comes to to switch sides and, and help the good guys, and, you know, it's never particularly fun to see a, you know, a female character just stand and not take a action, but at least she's, like, the only one so far. Every single other female character has actually done something on this show. Now, but yeah, very cool when all the X-Men fight Omega Red and the military, and Storm uses cold, which makes a lot of sense. That was what, you know, when he was frozen before, he wasn't active. And, yeah, you know, Colossus says he won't come back with them, st stressing the importance of rebuilding. So, which is, yeah, really, really important. Yeah. Extremely important after something like that has has happened. I guess that might be about what I have to say. Uh, as usual, really good use of the mutant powers. I like that we the moment the Wolverine, you know, he reads the note, you know, crushes it, and like the one thing he says is Omega Red. You know, so immediately we know, ooh, he's met him before. You know, he's not like who's Omega. Red? What was the what? No, no. It's like I thought I stopped you before. You know, kind of. And the um, yeah, it's it's interesting taking Xavier away from the X Men. I had honestly forgotten that the whole Savage Land thing was happening at this point in the show. I remember that the Savage Land made an appearance. But I did not remember it was this early. It's it's very cool because like season one is like oh they're really dependent on Xavier. You know he's he cuts off the the interpersonal conflicts on the team before they get out of control. He he's really helping providing like perspective and context. You know as uh, like he's one of the oldest of them. You know like. Wolverine is older, but he's also, and I, yeah, that hasn't really been established on the show so far, but yeah, the, you know, but yeah, older, memory loss, yeah, if you've watched the movies or read the comics, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I like that Jubilee is getting to be more independent, she was always kind of independent, but like, outright, like, taking a, a plane and flying to Russia, that's not nothing. Um, is there anything else? I continue to really appreciate that they're actually throwing really difficult enemies at the X-Men. Like, Omega Red, legitimately, like, really big challenge. Uh, so was the Shadow King... Yeah, I think that might be right. Um, 
love the the possessed voice of the the Shadow King. The the sharp teeth, the the glowing red eyes. Yeah. And I think that might be Right, I do kind of like the, the you know, I 100% believe that in real life, if a teenager could run that extremely fast, yeah, he'd probably screw with the, the football players. <laughs> like, he'd be like, no, 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 it's a, try, to, try to see if you can get the ball back. You know, the others are like, stop, stop doing that. We were trying to play. And, you know, he runs past the ball. As it's, yeah. Um... I suppose that might be about. Yeah, it was kind of funny that like the the when when Morph is posing as a bartender, like the others don't want to hear his jokes, so they walk off. It's just yeah, he's not for everyone. He's an acquired taste. Um, I think that might. I don't know if it was necessary for Wolverine to, like, a attempt to attack Omega Red's back. You know, I guess they f they figured some of the kids are going to need it explained that, you know, because it seems like, why would Wolverine forget? Why would he try to stab again? Because, you know, he did already verbally explain, you know, nothing can hurt him. Yeah, um... I think that might be it. Right, I really appreciate like the the attacks on the various Eastern European, uh, you know, villages and and such. Like it felt like a really, it felt dangerous. Like for a Saturday morning cartoon, you know, it it didn't feel like just oh you know minor th you know that was again one of the things like. Some of the 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles I absolutely love, but it was kind of like, you know, sometimes, oh, you know, that's it's a fight, but, you know, they're worried that parents aren't going to want their kids to watch the show and buy the toys and such, so, uh, I don't know, the turtles throw, you know, they, they attack Shredder with, like, pizza ingredients and dough. You know, or just these these things that, yeah. So I really appreciate that this show actually shows something that, you know, this even after the the end of the the Cold War, there was some anxiety around would Russia try to, you know, remake the Soviet Union, which. You know, you can you can understand where that's coming from. And I suppose that pretty well covers Yeah. Um see you again tomorrow. Make my marble.